Samantha Ray's footsteps echoed hollowly on the marble floor of the funeral home, each click of her heels a mournful metronome counting down the minutes until she had to say her final goodbye. Black crepe and white lilies adorned every surface, their cloying sweetness mingling with the sharp sting of embalming fluid. A fitting tribute, some would say, for the town's most beloved philanthropist. But to Samantha, it felt like a mockery. A carefully crafted facade, concealing the rot beneath. Just like her family. She paused at the open casket, stealing herself before forcing her gaze downward. Her mother's face, once so vibrant and alive, now lay waxy and still against the ivory satin pillow. Golden hair fanned out like a halo, the strands arranged with a precision her mother never possessed in life. Ruby red lips, a shade she'd always favored, were now painted on like a ghoulish mask. Samantha's throat constricted, an anguished sob threatening to claw its way out. This wasn't right. None of it. Her mother, eternally warm and chaotic, had no place in this cold, sterile box. The sheer wrongness of it tightened around Samantha's chest, constricting her ribs until she couldn't breathe. A heavy hand landed on her shoulder, the weight both familiar and repulsive. Such a tragedy, her stepfather, Richard, intoned gravely. She was taken from us too soon. Samantha stiffened, the urge to shrug off his touch warring with the numbness that had enveloped her for days. The numbness that had settled into her bones the moment she got the call. Accident, they'd said. So, sorry for your loss. But as Samantha stared down at her mother's artificially serene face, a flicker of doubt ignited in her gut. Accident. The word rattled around her skull, gaining sharp edges that sliced at her composure. Forty-eight years old, the picture of health, dead from a fall down the stairs. It didn't add up. Richard squeezed her shoulder, breaking her spiraling thoughts. Your mother loved you very much, Samantha. She would want you to remember that. She nearly laughed at the irony. As if Richard had any idea what her mother would want. As if he hadn't spent the entirety of their ten-year marriage chipping away at Caroline Ray's vivacious spirit, until only a husk remained. Oh, he'd played the doting husband in public, all smiles and charitable works. But, behind closed doors, bile rose in Samantha's throat as memories assaulted her. Raised voices filtering through her bedroom wall. The clink of ice in a glass, a harbinger of the tempest to come. The mottled purple bruises her mother hid beneath cashmere and Chanel. And now he stood here, the grieving widower, a study in feigned solemnity. She could almost admire his performance if it didn't make her physically ill. Samantha? A hesitant voice cut through the miasma of rage and grief. A voice she would know anywhere, even after all these years. She turned, heart stuttering in her chest. Nate. Dot. Owl. Detective Nathan Bowers stood a few feet away, hat literally in hand, his dark hair now peppered with silver at the temples. The sight of him, of the boy she'd loved with the reckless abandon of youth, now a man weathered by time and duty sent a fresh wave of pain crashing over her. I'm so sorry, he said softly, blue eyes shining with shared sorrow. Your mom. She was an amazing woman. Samantha's chin quivered, the sincerity in his voice unraveling the last threads of her composure. Thank you, she managed, the words ragged. I just... I can't believe she's gone. Nathan stepped closer, brow furrowing. I know it's not the time, but some things about her death, they don't sit right with me. A flutter of wings took flight in Samantha's stomach. So she wasn't crazy? Wasn't the only one who suspected. She darted a glance at Richard, now schmoozing with the mayor across the room, his political facade firmly in place. Lowering her voice, she asked, What things? Nathan's eyes met hers the intensity in their depths stealing her breath. I think we should talk. Privately. He hesitated, seeming to war with himself. There's something you need to know. About your dad. The world tilted on its axis. Her father. The one topic never broached, the name never spoken, in the Ray household. 
According to her mother, he was ancient history, a brief dalliance resulting in an unplanned pregnancy, a man who chose to walk away. And now, with her mother cold in the grave and her stepfather's machinations still a mystery, Nathan stood before her, offering answers to questions she'd long since buried. Not here, she whispered, acutely aware of Richard's gaze boring into her back. I'm staying at the old house on Maple. Meet me there tonight? He nodded, something like hope and trepidation warring on his face. Samantha understood the feeling all too well. The past had a way of sinking in its claws when you least expected it. With a final squeeze of her hand, Nathan replaced his hat and strode away, leaving Samantha reeling in his wake. She turned back to her mother's casket, a teardrop splashing on the cold metal edge. I'll find out the truth, Mom, she vowed under her breath. I promise. But as Samantha stood alone, staring into the face of death while the ghosts of the past circled ever closer, she couldn't shake the sinking certainty that the truth might just shatter what little peace she had left. After all, some secrets were never meant to be told. Some sins could never be absolved. And some loves, forged in the crucible of youth and torn asunder by time, may be too broken to ever fully mend. The old house on Maple loomed before Samantha, a ghostly specter silhouetted against the dying light. Paint peeled from the clapboard siding, shingles hung loose, and the once vibrant garden lay choked with weeds. A fitting reflection, she thought bitterly, of the decay that had eaten at her family from the inside out. With a steadying breath, she climbed the creaking steps, the porch swing swaying in the evening breeze like a hangman's noose. How many summer nights had she spent nestled on that swing, dreaming of a future far away from this place? A future where love conquered all, and happy endings weren't just the stuff of fairy tales? But reality had a way of tarnishing even the most fervent dreams. And as Samantha slid the key into the lock, the tumblers grinding in protest, she couldn't help but wonder if she'd walked away from her one true chance at happiness all those years ago. The door swung open, hinges screaming like a banshee, and the musty scent of neglect assailed her nostrils. Flicking on the lights, Samantha moved through the house like a specter, trailing fingers over dust-covered surfaces and faded photographs. Ghosts of a life she'd left behind, of a girl she barely recognized. A knock at the door jolted her from her reverie, heart leaping into her throat. Nathan? Dot. She'd almost forgotten, lost in the labyrinth of memories. She opened the door to find him standing on the threshold, a six-pack of beer dangling from one hand. A peace offering or a crutch, she wasn't sure. Maybe both. Come in, she said, stepping aside. The deja vu was suffocating, the echoes of a teenage girl sneaking her boyfriend inside while her parents slept. Only now, there were no parents to hide from. No innocence left to protect. Nathan set the beer on the coffee table, sinking onto the faded couch. Samantha perched beside him, acutely aware of the inches between them, the gulf of years and secrets and might have beens. What did you find out? she asked, the quaver in her voice betraying her desperate need for answers, for something tangible to cling to in the churning sea of grief and suspicion. Nathan reached into his jacket, withdrawing a manila folder. Your mom's autopsy report? He hesitated, the folder hovering between them like a live grenade. Samantha, her injuries. They're not consistent with a fall. The world tunneled to a pinpoint blood roaring in Samantha's ears. What are you saying? I'm saying. Nathan swallowed hard. I think she was pushed. Deliberately. The folder fell open, glossy photos spilling across the table. Livid bruises circling delicate wrists. Finger-shaped marks marring a slender throat. And there, at the base of her skull, a depressed fracture. Fatal. Samantha closed her eyes against the onslaught, nausea clawing up her esophagus. Her mind spun, puzzle pieces slotting together with sickening precision. The hushed arguments, the drunken rages, the escalating control that drove her to seek refuge halfway across the country. Richard, she whispered, the name bitter as cyanide on her tongue. That's not all, Nathan said grimly. I did some digging into his background. Samantha, your mom wasn't his first wife. 
The air fled Samantha's lungs in a rush. What? Before your mom, he was married to a woman named Evelyn. She died 12 years ago from a brain hemorrhage. Officially ruled an accident. An accident. The same word they'd used for her mother. The same convenient label slapped on like a band-aid, concealing the festering wound beneath. You think he killed her too? It wasn't a question. Nathan scrubbed a hand over his face. The weariness of a man who'd seen too much etched into every line. I think Richard Branson is a very dangerous man. A man who's gotten away with murder. Twice. Samantha's hands curled into fists, nails biting into her palms. The pain grounded her, tethering her to the nightmare unfolding before her eyes. Her mother, the woman who'd given her life, ripped away by the monster they'd both trusted. The monster they'd let into their home, their hearts. And now Samantha was all that remained. The final loose end. The last obstacle standing between Richard and the fortune he'd married into. Fear, cold, and visceral, slithered down her spine. Fear for herself, for the target she could feel forming between her shoulder blades. But also fear for the man beside her, the one who'd already risked so much to bring her the truth. She reached for Nathan's hand, lacing their fingers together. His palm was rough, callous from years of service, but his touch ignited a spark in the howling void of her chest. Promise me you'll be careful, she whispered, holding his gaze like a lifeline. Promise me you won't go after him alone. Something flickered in Nathan's eyes, an emotion too raw, too real, for Samantha to name. I won't let anything happen to you, Sam. I lost you once. I won't lose you again. His words, heavy with unspoken history, settled over Samantha like a shroud. A reminder of all they'd shared, all they'd sacrificed, in the name of duty and ambition. In the name of escaping the small town chains that had bound them. But even as her heart ached with the weight of it, the weight of the love they'd left behind, Samantha knew the path that lay before them was stained with blood and treachery. A path that could cost them both everything, even each other. She leaned in, resting her forehead against Nathan's. The contact seared her, branded her, like the heat of a thousand suns. And in that moment, with the ghosts of her past hovering and the specter of her future closing in, Samantha made a silent vow. She would avenge her mother's death. She would make Richard pay for every lie, every bruise, every shattered dream. And she would do it with the man she'd never stopped loving by her side, no matter the cost. The rain lashed against the windows of the old house on Maple, a staccato drum beat, punctuating the tumult in Samantha's heart. She stood at the sink, staring unseeing at the rivulets carving paths down the glass, an untouched mug of coffee cooling in her hands. Three days. That's how long it had been since Nathan had shared his suspicions about Richard. Three days of poring over police reports, financial records, and the scattered detritus of her mother's life searching for the smoking gun that would bring her stepfather to his knees. But Richard was clever, a master manipulator who'd perfected the art of the facade. A philanthropist. A pillar of the community. A wolf in sheep's clothing. And with each dead end, each cold trail, Samantha felt the noose of desperation tighten around her neck. The creak of the floorboards shattered her reverie, and she whirled, sloshing coffee over the rim of the mug. Nathan stood in the doorway, his expression grim. Richard's on the move, he said without preamble. He booked a flight to the Caymans, one way. Leaves in two hours. Samantha's heart plummeted to her toes. He's running. Nathan nodded, jaw clenched. And if he gets on that plane, we'll never see him again. The unspoken hung between them, sharp as a razor's edge. If Richard escaped, he'd get away with murder. Again, Caroline Ray would become just another statistic, another cautionary tale, filed away to gather dust in the annals of unsolved crimes. And Samantha. Samantha would spend the rest of her life looking over her shoulder, wondering when the past would catch up to her, when Richard would decide that loose ends needed tying. We can't let that happen, she said, steel lacing her words. We have to stop him. Nathan's eyes met hers the blue depths swirling with a maelstrom of emotion. 
fear, determination, and something else. Something that set Samantha's blood alight. Love. Bleh. Reckless, relentless, unrepentant love. In three strides, he crossed the kitchen, crushing her to his chest. Samantha melted into him, into the solid warmth of his body, the steadiness of his heartbeat. An anchor in the storm will stop him, Nathan murmured into her hair. Together. Dell, I promise. Samantha clung to him to his words, like a talisman. A prayer whispered into the void. Because failure was not an option. Not when the stakes were this high. Not when the price was her very soul. Dana, Aki. Samantha burst into from the parking garage, Nathan on her heels. In the distance, a jet rumbled down the runway, engines screaming. The roar filled her head, her heart, as they raced toward the departure's gate. Toward Richard. Toward vengeance. Toward absolution. She spotted him near the security line, designer luggage in hand. A jaunty Panama hat tipped low over his brow. The very picture of carefree leisure. It made Samantha sick. Richard? Her shout echoed across the concourse, turning heads. Richard froze, then slowly pivoted, a smile stretching his lips. A shark scenting blood in the water. Samantha, darling. Come to see me off. She skidded to a halt, chest heaving. Nathan flanked her, a silent sentinel, his presence both comfort and strength. I know what you did, she spat, the words toxic on her tongue. I know you killed my mother. Richard's smile never wavered. Is that what you've been telling yourself? That I'm some sort of monster? He'd skecked, shaking his head. Grief can play tricks on the mind, dear. Make us see things that aren't there. Samantha recoiled as if slapped. The sheer audacity, the unmitigated gall, to stand there and lie to her face. It ignited a fury in her belly, white hot and all consuming. I saw the autopsy report, she seethed. I saw the bruises, the broken bones. You pushed her down those stairs. You murdered her in cold blood. Something flickered in Richard's eyes, a darkness that chilled Samantha to her marrow. You really should learn to let sleeping dogs lie, Samantha. Digging up the past. It's a dangerous game. Beside her, Nathan stiffened, his hand drifting to the gun at his hip. Is that a threat? Richard's chuckle was pure ice. Merely an observation. His eyes flicked to the security line, now dwindling to a trickle. Time was running out. It's over, Richard, Samantha said, her voice hard as flint. You're getting on that plane. You're gonna pay for what you've done. And who's going to make me? You? Richard sneered, all pretense of civility stripped away. The mask had cracked, revealing the monster beneath. You're just like your mother. Weak, dight, pathetic. A spoiled little rich girl who never learned her place. Samantha flinched the words slicing into her like razors. But Nathan surged forward, placing himself between her and Richard. A human shield. I'm afraid my wife won't be going with you. The voice cut through the tension like a knife, cultured and smooth as aged scotch. A voice Samantha knew but never thought she'd hear again. George Branson emerged from the crowd, dapper in a tailored suit, steel-gray hair glinting under the fluorescence. Richard's older brother, the one who'd left town years ago, unable to live, with the cancer within his family, the one man Richard could never control, never manipulate. George. Richard spat the name like a curse. What the hell are you doing here? I could ask you the same question, little brother. George's tone was acid. Though I suppose fleeing the country to escape a murder charge does have a certain ring to it. Richard paled, his fingers white-knuckling the handle of his luggage. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you? George reached into his breast pocket, withdrawing a sheaf of papers. Flight records. Bank statements. And a rather interesting tidbit from our dear mother's diary. Something about you always being a troubled boy. Quick to anger. Quick to lash out. The color drained from Richard's face, 
his complexion going ashen. Where did you get those? George smiled, thin and razor sharp. Amazing what skeletons come tumbling out of the closet when one starts to look. Oh, don't worry, I'm not here to dredge up the sordid family history. I'm here to inform you that Branson Estate is freezing your assets. Effective immediately. Richard's eyes bulged, mottled crimson flooding his cheeks. You can't do that. I think you'll find I can. George's tone brooked no argument. You see, dear brother, you may have been content to live off mother's money all these years, a parasite fattening itself on the family coffers. But some of us still care about the Branson name. The Branson legacy. And that legacy does not include harboring a murderer. Samantha watched the exchange, scarcely daring to breathe. The dynamics at play, the currents of power and control, were dizzying. A family fractured to the bone, the rot exposed for all to see. Richard vibrated with barely leashed violence, a snake coiled to strike. His gaze swung to her, venom and vitriol. This is your fault. You couldn't just leave it alone. Couldn't just be a good little girl and play your part. Samantha met his stare unflinching, drawing strength from Nathan's steady presence, from George's unwavering support, from her mother's memory, a flame eternal. My part was never to be your victim. Her words lashed like a whip. My part was to survive, to thrive, to make sure your sins saw the light of day. She stepped forward, squaring her shoulders. The girl she'd been, the fractured waif who'd let this man shatter her world, melted away. In her place stood a warrior. A phoenix, baptized in the fires of heartache, unafraid of the flames. You controlled my mother. You controlled Evelyn. But you will never control me. Never again. Richard lunged, a viper striking, but Nathan was faster. In a blur of motion, he had Richard pinned, arm wrenched behind his back, face slammed into the linoleum. Richard Branson, you're under arrest for the murder of Caroline Ray. Nathan's voice rang with grim finality as he snapped the cuffs around Richard's wrists, around the wrists that had ended her mother's life. Samantha watched, a sob catching in her throat as her stepfather was hauled away. The monster vanquished. The demon exercised. The nightmare, at long last, over. George's touch on her elbow startled her. She turned to find him watching her with eyes that gleamed with pride. With absolution. Your mother would be so proud of you, he said softly. The tears came then, hot and cleansing. Tears for her mother, for the life stolen too soon. Tears for herself, for the strength she'd found in the crucible of pain and tears for Nathan, the unshakable pillar by her side. Her touchstone, her true north. He gathered her into his arms, their heartbeats aligning. Two broken pieces, fusing together to form a whole. A foundation, unshakable in the certainty of their love. Tested by fire, tempered by loss. Unbreakable in truth. For although the ghosts of the past could never be vanquished, Never fully laid to rest, Samantha realized she no longer feared their shadows, no longer cowered in their wake. She had faced the darkness. She had walked through the valley of the shadow, and she had emerged, scarred but unbroken, into the light, into love, into hope, into the promise of a future, bright as the sun cresting the horizon. As Samantha turned her face to that light, Nathan's hand firmly clasped in hers. She knew the path ahead would not be easy. Healing never was. But she also knew with a bone-deep certainty that she would never walk it alone. Never again. For in the end it was love that had saved her. Love that had sustained her. And it was love, pure and true, fierce and unrelenting, that would guide her home. 